begin. Hello and good luck. All right, so E4. Well, we're going with my tournament repertoire, which is E5. Knight C3, huh? Knight C3. Well, in tournaments I play bishop c5, and so that's what I'm doing today. Um, yeah, one could argue about the soundness of this for black, but I think this is what I usually do, so I'm not afraid to play it. If I remember right, um, perhaps it was um, Grandmaster Evans when he wrote his book, What's the Best Move, that quizzes you on opening positions. Something like this was one of those opening positions and did recommend this knight takes a sack. Maybe it, maybe it is one of the puzzles in the book proper. Um, in any event, I think white's intending f4. And I probably need to follow up with like c6 or d6. I want to play knight f6, but that would force me to take on c3 once he plays f4. Um, I don't see any other way to stop f4. Like queen h4, trying to stop it just runs into g3. <laughs> I could play g6 here. That would be an opening novelty. We're doing it. We're inventing theory here today. All right. So, she's fixing her hair, says, Hey, I noticed a pattern on Lee Chess. When I start a game, and it's one of those games when my opponent doesn't move and I hover over his name, see what game he's playing right now, and I see the game against me, but with colors reversed. Do I know anything about it? I don't. All right, so... I'm going to keep deferring, pushing... Um, my bishop back to g7 until he plays f4. There's f4. Got him to play it. And now we're in some kind of weird Peart's reversed, or Peart's position. Um, he's intending e5, just cracking open the center before I castle. Uh, um, I want to put my knight there. My knight's not getting there in time, though. I could consider knight e7, knight c6, which does burn a tempo, but it's probably worth it at this point. Um, oh, also I should connect my queen and my rook, so if he plays e5, I can just take it. So, yeah, candidate moves that occurred to me were knight f6, knight h6, knight e7, bishop e6, bishop g4, bishop d7. Bishop d7 actually looks reasonable. It's a bit cluttered. It does keep the bishop pair, but I'm crowded here, so I need to trade off this bishop. Plus, if I play bishop g4, I mean, I know he's going to play bishop g2, but I gain a tempo regardless. Um, yeah, I mean, where's my bishop going if not there? If I play bishop e6 eventually... I just don't want to trade in the middle, because that helps accelerate some sort of attack against my king. And I want to move my knight out so I can castle. Uh, I need a tempo. Uh, ladder just means that uh, somebody's pre-arranging these matches, or arranging the pairings for these matches. I misspoke. Um, So they're arranging the pairings for these matches, so uh, if you win, you go up the ladder and get harder opponents. If you lose, you go down the ladder and you get easier opponents. And it just keeps the games interesting. Um, yeah, my king's not in a good spot. Oh, here's a thought. So knight e7, if e5 I play bishop f5 after which I can take there. Problem is he's got queen b5, but then I play c6 and he takes on b7, but I've got rook b8, and he takes on a7, and maybe I'm threatening something on c3, but probably not. 
This is complicated. Also, I can try to gain some kind of tempo, and it's just not working. Also, if I move my bishop away, he just checks me here, just in general. Um, so... I think I just need to rapidly develop and bring all my pieces toward the queen side and hope something shows up. I think that's the plan. As tempting as knight h6 is, it just doesn't work here with such a fluid center. Oh, I'm sorry, now I understand the original question, what is this theme? You're not referring to a music theme, you're referring to what's the actual user style I'm using here. Um, and you know, if I had been prepared for that, I would just have Nightbot at the ready, ready to chime in, linking you to my beautiful, awesome, wonderful theme, which I am about to link you to any second here. Uh, come on, Nightbot, where are you? Where are you? And then I can link you to my user style. There we are. See, that wasn't so painful. Um, so he's intending an all-out war on the king's side. Um, do I play h5? It's tempting. But then I can't play bishop g4 when he plays bishop e2. Uh, I don't want to play bishop g4 right away, but I don't see better. Should be e6 would be the flexible way to approach this, but uh, it might be so flexible that my position just flops. Um, hmm, this is tricky. This is very tricky. You know? Maybe I should study these positions one day and actually understand uh, some of the motifs in this position. I think I just need to slow down his attack, and the only way I can do that is by exchanging bishops, which is a pretty wimpy thing to do, but um, he attacks and runs away, lives to attack another day. So we're gonna do that. I'm just gonna trade down and do the boring thing because I'm not seeing any initiative for me here. Uh, actually, I could play queen d7. Uh, it's not so clear. No, I think I have to trade. Huh. <sighs> <laughs> yep, I've got a trade here. The uh, main alternative is moves like h5 and f5, which just weaken my king too much. So, there's the exchange. Um, now, to develop my queen, I can't push my c-pawn because the d-pawn hangs. can't push the d-pawn because it hangs. I could move my knight to c6. This brings my knight toward his king anyhow. And I've got the time to do this because this rook is still sitting here on h1. If, it, if he had a rook on the e-file, then I would be panicking. But as it stands, I've got time. Um, well, if you're curious about my progress on Crazy House Stockfish, uh, I could show you how far I've gotten. You're going to be very underwhelmed by it. Um, but, you know, let me go find that. Yeah, here it is. I have made a very little bit of progress regarding that. I have added a flag to support the variant. That's about it. I don't know how it would be done. A lot of questions remain unanswered at this time, um, 
but yeah it's in the works I just need to find the time and motivation at the same time to do it but don't be expecting anything anytime soon <laughs> okay well here we go it is on it is on um hmm so the thing here is i gain a tempo a really significant tempo which completely changes the evaluation of this position so because of this move i'm threatening b2 now you might think what's the big deal right i mean clearly white can do something about that threat this is the big deal and now we have an interesting position. So, uh, now what? I mean, yeah, theoretically, I haven't even thought it through far enough, but why wouldn't you be able to do similar things for um, uh, Bug House and Crazy House? Obviously, in the one, you're able to ask your teammate for pieces, and the other, you aren't. But I think that whole team aspect could apply to any variant, not just Crazy House. There might be some ways that you want to team enable other kinds of variants. So, yeah, I mean, maybe some other kind of constant makes more sense. But I'm just, like, completely opening wide the box of thought there. Because I really don't know how to do it. So why limit myself to any one idea at this time? All right, so h6 is played. This crowds my pieces quite a bit. Um, I'm pretty sure I want to play uh, bishop f8 here. Yep, so we're playing bishop f8. I know I tempted to play things like knight b4, but they just don't go anywhere. Now he's got this pawn on h6, but what's the big deal? The big deal is if he manages to like land his knight on g5 or f6 and then take this pawn. But until he does that, everything he's done is kind of misplaced. So I'm making this challenging for him. Um, yeah, and I saw this coming. I saw queen e6 coming. And I didn't see any alternative to queen e6, and I still don't, so we're playing queen e6. So, I mean, yeah, obviously this h6 is quite an impediment that makes it hard for black to advance on the king's side, but uh, here's a target. There's a target. I'll just give it some time and effort and maybe uh, win the end game. This is maybe a target. So I should be aiming to play things like rook e8, rook e8. I don't know. If I had another rook, I'd probably put it on e8. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what white's up to. I mean, if I could just arbitrarily place a rook anywhere, a1 would be good, too. Um, so the question is, can I finish development, or is white overextended? I do have this idea of f5, maybe. Um, but my pieces are really awkwardly placed. And I'm not sure if f5 would help with that. This whole idea I've got floating in the back of my mind is bishop e7, but where does that really go? Um, I mean, how am I going to develop this bishop is the tricky question here. Now, maybe I just have to move the bishop long enough to get the rook out and then not worry about it. 
Or maybe I play rook g8 and just break open the g-file. Maybe to that end, f5 makes sense, both connecting my pressure in the center and trying to open the g-file, so rook g8 makes more sense. Um, certainly he's kind of tied down at the moment. Also, maybe king b8 at some point might make sense. Uh, although a6 is reasonable too. The point is I just don't want to hang the a pawn and get absolutely nothing for it. So if I were to play something like knight e7, it does invite bishop d4, but um, I don't know. This is tricky. Okay, b4, there it is. So I was saying earlier that a6 might make sense, just so I don't hang the pawn, but now a6 would have a second purpose of um, trying to hinder b5. Uh, but is that the best use of my time? I don't know. I think rook e8 makes a great deal of sense. Um, Although it's challenging to follow up after that. Uh, so many possibilities. Uh, A6 is the most tempting move on the board. Yeah. I really don't want to play king b8 because then my king's defending itself. And that's not the best use of the king. Okay, so I'm going to apply pressure on the half-open file. He's probably playing b5, and I think I just go back. Because, I mean, okay, it looks scary, but what's the point? There always needs to be some kind of point. Actually, knight e7 might make more sense. Um, only because if I go back, he just plays bishop d4. My rook's attacked. The problem there is after rook g8, knight f6. Uh, which defends e4, by the way. Also possible is maybe knight a5. Um, that looks scary. I mean, I want to bring my knight toward his king. I'm not entirely unjustified in wanting that. And so if it costs me a little bit of material to do so, maybe I shouldn't be so afraid of that. Um... I don't know, 97 looks quite reasonable though. How could I turn that down? Yeah, so I think I have to take here and then play knight e7. I have to take here first because otherwise a6 evaporates. And now when he plays bishop d4, I think I just take on d5. don't have the tempo to do that. Um, maybe I take e4 here. 
Queen takes, pawn takes knight, pawn takes, queen a6 check. King d7. Um, I mean, I'm still hitting knight and the bishop. Is this so bad? Queen takes. Um, yeah, we have that sequence. My king ends up here. Queen a4 pins my pawn hitting the knight. Oh, but my queen's protecting a4. Is there any other pin? No. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing it. So I'm giving a knight for two pawns if I do that. If I just do knight e7 here, he does bishop d4, I have to move. And he plays knight f6, and I'm just bottled up. Um, do I have a, I just am not seeing any alternative. Uh, my intended move, knight e7, doesn't quite foot the bill. Because uh, I can't just take d5, because he does pawn takes d5. And then I don't have queen e3 check because bishop takes. So I need to find something. Either there, just my entire play has been refuted. Which is possible. I could maybe consider knight b4. Knight takes b4, queen takes e4. Forking knight and bishop. He's got bishop there. Um... I take g2 maybe. I'm getting something, but it's not enough. Knight b4, knight takes. Queen takes e4, it's the first pawn. Uh, I could do knight d5, guarding everything. And I'd have to do c6, and like my king's collapsing. Uh, probably with tempo. So that doesn't cut it. Yeah, I think I'm sacking my knight for two pawns. Just because I need... Um, my pieces need freedom. And uh, this is the only way to free them. Yeah, it's been a while, guys. So... I... I completely expect he's just going to take the knight. He could trade queens first, but I don't know that that makes a difference. Maybe it does. Okay, we've got a super sharp tactical move on the board. Um, obviously I still can't move the knight because of mate in one. Um, still, I don't know that this improves things for him. Um, so I could consider... I mean, yeah, obviously he's threatening queen takes h8, right? We all see that. So... It's too bad there's no way to reverse the tactic. How fun would it be to do that? Um, you know, pieces just aren't in the right formation to reverse that, and I could consider queen a4 anyway. And then once the knight moves away, I could push d5, and I'm threatening to reverse it, but um, I've given up a rook at that point. And there's nothing saying he has to take on c6 in the first place, so... Giving up two pieces and an attempt to win a queen is probably not the right way to do it. Um, you yeah, know, I have to walk into this knight f6 fork, and I can trade here and lose my rook. Do I get anything for it? Probably not. Um, is there anything else I can do? Do king b8. Uh, could do king d7. Losing my queen. Um, bishop e7 does connect things. 
Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So many tactics. Um, yeah, bishop to e7 does at least unhang most of my pieces. All right, so this is going to hurt. Um, I have successfully undeveloped everything. Yeah, now do I take on c6 and invite his queen in? Or do I play something else? Uh, if his queen ends up there, I'm probably losing my queen. Um, so I've got to try to avoid that. So backward we go. And this is what convinced me to play bishop e7, by the way. Is that, okay, I'm down an entire knight, but there's still a game to be played. It's not an easy game, it's going to be a very difficult game, in fact, but there is still a game here. Yeah, you can even see, like, the minus two over here, which indicates I'm down two at the moment. Once he takes on b7, it'll be three, and then when I take back, it's going to be two again, and um, yeah, there's no question I've been completely outplayed here. So this completely refutes my idea of castling queenside. Uh, I thought I had time to do it. The reality is I had to castle kingside and probably get checkmated that way, but at least it would have looked better than this. I wonder what he's thinking about. Is he just like choosing, do I want to take on b7? Do I want to play rook e1? Do I want to play, um, I don't know, bishop d4? No, not bishop d4. That seems weird. Is he just looking through his possibilities? Or um, is there actually some resource for me here? If he plays bishop d4, he's threatening my rook. Um, I think I'm forced to take on c6 then. He takes my rook, I take his knight, and I still don't have enough initiative to stir anything up, so that doesn't work. Um, but the alternative is they play rook f8. And he plays bishop g7, I play rook g8, and he does knight f6. So I'm talking about is this bishop here to here, and my rook does some little shuffling, and then I end up walking into a fork, and he plays knight f6, and okay. This is probably even more convincing, so he goes with this instead. Um, I'm not going to let that pawn sit there. All right. Where's the checkmate? Show me the checkmate. There it is. Oh, that's good. All right, let's see that on the board. Wait, no, he's got knight b6, and now my king goes back. I thought that was checkmate. All right, so I keep moving. Uh, now what? My queen guards the long diagonal. I'm attacking the knight and attacking the rook. Uh, I think we were both under the illusion that knight b6 is checkmate, and it's not so simple. So I've gotten two pawns um, for my piece. I'm down to a minute and 21 seconds. If I do manage to turn this around, that would be, um, I guess, unbelievable. But I have to try. You don't just resign because you're down at night. You just play it out. So 
Yeah, maybe he does knight to c4 and then knight takes d6. Um, although if he does knight c4, maybe I do king c6. I and mean, what's the most combative way I can address this, right? If he does knight c4 and I go back, he's threatening knight takes d6 and then taking e8. So um, I would be forced instead of knight c4. I think I'd have to go forward. OK, so none of that happened. My king is still in grave peril. I could take b6. That'd be fun. Can I just say how fun that would be? I did. I'm doing it. All right. Well, we're having some fun today. Um, now he's got three attackers on that square. I should be afraid. Oh, he's got an attack on this. I could sack my rook with rook e6. Rook takes pawn, takes queen, takes rook. That might be the way to go here. I don't know how else I defend the square. Yeah, once b6 falls, my entire position kind of collapses. Oh, I got queen f1 to a6. That's beautiful. And then rook takes, bishop takes, rook takes, queen takes, bishop takes, king takes. And we have an endgame. We've got an endgame. It's not the one I would have liked, but it is an endgame. And the alternatives all hang materials, so we're going for this. Um, oh, wait. I just opened this wide open. Um, that's kind of scary. That's his fourth attacker. Yeah, no, that's GG. Um, I did not see that. Okay, maybe he didn't see it. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> well, we're gonna go with this. This is the end game. Just keeps getting worse and worse. If I'd gone to a eight, I think I get mated. Um. I have no time to calculate any of this, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Queen a6 is bad. I needed to go for the other endgame, which I evaluated to be lost, but it's less lost than this one. I mean, there is one pretty simple way he can go forward here, I think. If I'm evaluating things right. It involves some modesty and admitting that it's actually kind of difficult. Um, and that psychological step in itself might be too much. Um, but if he calculates and he sees that nothing else works, maybe he'll go for what I see. Yeah, no, that's a try. No, I just need to activate my pieces here. Um, no, that's not what I was looking, expecting. Um, uh, so maybe, maybe bishop c7. I don't want to set traps. Now, bishop c7 is necessary to uh, defend against mating threats. I have no time to elaborate. But just trust me, it's necessary. Uh, I have to take this. OK, do I go to d6 or here? I think here. I 
think d6 allows too many possibilities. Forced. My queen's way off sides, my rook's in the corner, which is bad. But I can't allow a skewer on the diagonal. Uh, okay. Well, this is forced. The alternative, king c8, queen c7, checkmate. This is not checkmate, so this is better. Okay. Oh, there's the checkmate. Yeah, good game, well played. Um, so, back around here, what I was looking at, which looked simplest to me, he found this rook d7, which is excellent. It just refutes my whole queen a6. But what I saw here is you just take, 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 and black, white's got a queen and a bishop. Black's got two rooks, both of which are attacked, and white's threatening mate. So um, I guess maybe black does this to stop the mate in two, but white is so far ahead here and there's no way to protect this pawn with the rook forever. So, I mean, white just slowly rearranges his pieces and crushes black. Um, that's what I was looking at. The stockfish agree, or stockfish JS, I think this is. Yeah, I mean, this is just over. Maybe due to tactics also. Like, this threatens um, discover check. Um... If you're moving the rook, this is bad. If you're moving the king, you get mated, I think. So, I mean, if we look at that. Oh, right, mate's on a7. So, black has to just um, concede that this is just busted. Uh, there might be mating threats too, but I mean, just take here, take there. There's all kinds of ways white can win that. Uh, so, going back. Going back. Um, my idea, queen a6, I don't think was so bright. Now, arguably I'm busted here in any event. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but this queen f1, I hesitated quite a bit on. And I think it would have made more sense. Oh, I didn't even see this idea. Fortunately, it doesn't work, but I didn't see it. Um, that doesn't work for so many reasons. Uh, I was looking at, wasn't Rook E6? Was it? I know I mentioned Rook E6 and just said, oh, white takes that and then takes the free Rook. Um, yeah, no, that's no good. I thought I saw something else here. What was the other thing I was mentioning? Uh, I was looking a lot at a lot of really tricky variations. Um, I don't see what it was that I was looking at. Where'd it go? Maybe it was Rook E6, but if it was, that's a pity. Rook E6 is best on 29, probably, but maybe it was Rook E6. I'm just thinking, I'm down a Rook here. And my bishop's on pre. And my pawn's on pre with check. Um, was there something other than taking back here? No. So what was I looking at? I thought I saw something. Alright, computer, tell me what it is. Bishop c7. I saw bishop c7. Oh, wait, wait. What if white. I mean, yeah, you could argue the merits of rook d7, queen c6, and maybe there's some other tactic here that changes that. But, um, but bishop c7 doesn't address this threat at all. Oh, I guess I just can't take it. Now maybe that's tricky for white to find rook takes pawn, but Stockfish, or whatever engine this is, says that rook d7 is good in any event. Um, 
Oh, I see the tactic now. So here's the tactic, guys. Rook d7. If I go back and defend it, you take, take, uh, wait, there's no tactic. I've been hoodwinked by my own ignorance. All right, so what am I missing? You take here, and the bishop's pinned, forcing black to give up the queen. Well, that's not so simple. Uh, black's getting mated there, by the way. Um, so... Rook takes d6 is winning. Um, I did also, mentally I was struggling with this move of pawn takes knight. I didn't hesitate to play it because I was in extreme time pressure, but it doesn't matter. So where, oh where am I busted? Is king takes b7 the losing move? No, king takes b7 is recommended. And I'm still busted here. I see somebody has analyzed the game on my behalf, so I no longer have the opportunity to figure this out by myself. Um, so bishop to e7 was the bad move. I did consider this queen a4. I'm pretty sure I did. I said this is bad, and Stockfish agrees, but this is what I should have done anyway. That's what I get for rejecting... Um, my suggestions but all right so where did this go awry i did say after the game that castle queenside was losing uh stockfish agrees oh i had the right idea i just didn't play it right i had to stop h6 and then castling queenside would have been okay-ish not the best in the world, but it would have been survivable. All right. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't think I would have so many problems developing my pieces, but I just didn't think. That's my fault. I need to get back in shape. Ah, so, you know, I was so proud of inventing new theory. Yep. That's what happens when you innovate. G6 led me down this road where white had this good possibility and I traded down because I was afraid and rightfully so but uh, G6 got me to this position that I had no idea what I was doing and I thought I thought Queen F6 was brilliant and um, I really underestimated this on H6 move because I just had no idea what I was doing here Okay, but say I do play h6. Um, let me be all antagonistic for a second. What if knight d5? Is knight d5 okay? Because uh, if white's okay here, I don't like this position. Okay, oh. So knight d5 doesn't gain a tempo, because I thought knight d5 gained a tempo because I wouldn't have time to move the queen and castle. I can't calculate. Um, See, so yeah, I definitely had time for h6. Um, is there th any other minor things I missed here? I mean, missing h6 was just saying that I can't calculate, but um, I thought... Hmm. I mean, trading off like this, bishop g4, bishop takes e2, is not at all in my style. Uh, I understand that here it's objectively best, and it slows down white's attack. I thought I'd be able to stop it, um, and I just completely misjudged that. Um, but is there a way I could have played in my style here? Like, the other thing I wanted to do was knight h6. Is knight h6 any good? I mean, I saw h3. I wasn't worried. Well, I mean, I was worried, but um, this is the sort of nonsense I play in tournaments anyway. Usually pretty successfully, because it takes a lot of skill to play these attacks correctly, and most opponents aren't up to the task. And if I'm going to sack a piece for one or two pawns, 
I mean, we saw that that happened in the game. Here, I, I could have done it under much more favorable circumstances. I could give up a knight and have a bishop pair. And this is not easy. Now, you don't want to do this kind of sack. Nobody wants to do it. Um, but if I'm going to do that sort of thing, at least try to be consistent to the way I usually play. Um, sort of conceded the center. But where did I do that? Was it g6 where I gave up the fight? Okay, so it's not like here I have to move the bishop, right? I could have moved bishop b4 and exchanged on c3, I guess. Didn't really think about that. Um, I mean... This would have fought for the center. This could have been interesting, but white has a really large center there, so that's not it. So bishop c5... I mean, maybe this is the move where I gave up the center. Because after that, this is forced. This is forced. This is forced. And then g6 is my next move. And maybe that was it. Maybe between g6 and d6, that's where things fell apart. But, man, that's hard to believe. Maybe it's true. Chess is just really complicated like that. The best move was knight f6. I didn't think this was playable. I was afraid of f4. I guess I take here, he takes... Oh, wait, what's going on here? I think a castle? Um, after I castle bishop d3, I mean, how is this any more claiming the center than what I played? I guess I have options of whether I want to play rook e8 or d5 or d6 and b6, and this is a lot more flexible, but I don't think d6 is bad. Uh, I think f4 really forces black into a bind, because you can't play bishop there. Is there some tactical resource here? Oh, okay, bishop takes c3, which is what I said, and then castle. No, no, you don't play e5 here. Just no. Okay, I mean, you only play that if you're tactically forced to. I guess this is forcing, because white hasn't castled. If white had already castled, then black would be in, in trouble there, but um, I guess there's not time for f4. So you just play the more modest f3. White still controls the center, black's pieces are misplaced. This is all caused by that bishop c5 earlier, um, that black's pieces are misplaced, but it's a playable position. Um, so yeah, d6 is where I ended up giving up the center. And this did violate the open or the principle of don't put your pawns on the same collar or square as your bishop. Note that my bishop over here can't move to places like f5 or e6 very easily because of this pawn having stepped forward. So yeah, I just played way too passively. My bad. Um yeah, I guess there's another thought. Like, if I'm going to play uh, d6, and evidently I did in the game, and I thought it was okay, I thought this position is moving too slowly, I've got time for that sort of thing. If I'm going to play d6, why not just play it now? And then say if white does something like this, then throw in f5, and I don't need to play g6. g6 is kind of a silly move. No, I mean, here it's a gambit. Who cares? Um... We'll back up and just take a look at d6. Check, let's see, does our opening explorer say anything? It says f4 here. And then we exchange there. And I hate giving up the bishop here, because all my remaining pieces are inactive, but here at least the pawns aren't forcing my pieces to retreat. And I don't like giving up pawns either. I'm very materialistic, so getting me to play this would be tricky. Um, yeah, in fact, white did win this game against a 1770, so I should probably not be following the game. Um, if I back up... Okay, so white's won both games from this position. If I back up here... Um, 
White's won most of the games from this position. After d queen d3, uh, the onus is on black to find something. I did consider queen f6. Um, yeah, there's no games in the Explorer for this, but um, I don't know. I thought this was too dicey. Okay, so that, this, this, that. Okay, sure. Why not? Um, yeah, I guess that's forced. We take. This would have been okay. It's not comfortable, but I can play it. Um, so yeah, maybe queen f6 is the way to go here instead of g6. Uh, Stockfish recommends knight f6 as it suggests here, but um, uh, I just don't know. This is the old way to address this, and I just really don't like giving up the bishop for the knight. In this wide open position where giving up the bishop with a fluid pawn structure just means that white's going to torture black for the rest of the game and there's no counterattack. Um, which ultimately brings me back to this and the maxim knights before bishops. I just don't like this position, but it's playable. I just need to study it. There's all kinds of things here. There's uh, just for reference. I mean, you could see this in the opening explorer, too. Uh, White well, could play bishop c4, bishop b5, d4, or even knight takes e5 is playable. Uh, sometimes in this position, I have played bishop e2. g3 is also possible, as is a3 and d3. And there's these eight different ways of playing this position, all with a very different character. I'm not booked up on and ready to play. And I need to book up on these things if I'm going to keep playing e5. And if I'm not going to book up on that sort of thing, I should prepare some other opening. Um, so we found a hole in my tournament repertoire. Um, I've played bishop c5 in the past here to avoid all those eight different lines and go for something that opponents generally don't know. Um, and this is okay. By itself, but g6, which is my opening experiment today, just completely and totally backfired. So, let's see, what do I missed? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we can look at. Unlike Zug, I have actually filtered this down to exclude noobs um, and exclude bullet games. So, this does contain practical games where the average rating's over 2,000. Um, I didn't know that excluded the master game set. Yeah, see, the master game set has one game here that doesn't tell you anything. And it's a draw, and it's probably a quick draw if I had to guess, but what do I know? Um, but, yeah. Uh, hang on. Where did my games go? Yeah, so, let's show... I guess the Master Games has more games than Lee Chess does here, so I'm not making a fair comparison. I'm just being emotional. <laughs> All right, so what else is going on? Um, yeah, Bishop d6 looks pretty awkward. You're talking about this, right? Um, and I'm pretty sure Grandmaster Evans' book, um, What's the Best Move, where he quizzes you on these opening positions many of which are tricky and trappy and such. Um, I think it does cover the specific positions, bishop c5, and it suggests that white plays this, and that after this, uh, d takes, bishop takes, it sugge he suggests f4, and just says that white's better uh, due to controlling the center. Um, just to give you an idea, I was able to read that book because it's like 100 pages and most of it's pictures. And it just tells you basically what not to do in some pretty popular openings and what to do in some popular openings. And so this is what I was expecting. Um, I think white's just fine here. I mean, it's nothing to boast about, but um, white's got a strong center, the bishop pair, open lines everywhere. 
white can't complain about this, but it's not enough to crush black. But um, decades have passed since that book was published, and we've got other moves in the position. And white doesn't have to try to uh, play f4. White can play more reservedly and not gain his king in as much danger. Um, and in which case, I need to be prepared to do something. I like playing crazy moves because they're fun, but um, g6 is a bit too crazy here. Um, so I suggested queen f6. That didn't pan out so well. What about bishop takes knight? I know I hate giving up the bishop here. Uh, he's going to take back with the queen. And then I just do queen f6. And I mean, can I play this? No, because queen takes there. Okay, so I still play knight f6 here. That's not so comfortable either. So, I mean, I shouldn't be anxious to take that. I should just play knight f6 here. And apparently I'm okay. It's a really tense position, but um, this is doable. And let me just dip into the master database again. I'll, I'll try to keep it in that mode. Um, all set. So the most popular move here is bishop d2. Castle, castle, um, rook e8, uh, f3. It is interesting how black scores better in these positions. Uh, it's probably because black's the one dictating the pace of the game. And so white doesn't choose these lines as much. White generally chooses more forcing things. So likely black is higher rated in most of these. Um, let's see. So... Yeah, I'm trying to follow what your guys are saying about bishop c4 and knight takes e4. I think what you're saying is like if this position were reversed, um, yeah, we could go into the Vienna lines where black does that same fork trick in the center. Um, you know, I've seen this position before too. I don't think by this move order, but I've seen it before. Uh, maybe the queen was on c7. Anyhow, this is playable, as are many variations from here. Um, uh, so what really freaked me out was just Grandmaster Evans, and his, if I'm remembering his book right, I'll have to check afterward, and I'm not sure I even have the book anymore. But I was all concerned about this possibility of f4. Um, well, here, because knight f6 hits the pawn, that's not working out so well. So, you know, memory is a dangerous thing to rely upon. It's better to calculate some of these things. Um, if pawn pushes to d5, then I can go queen d7. Well, I, I don't think this pawn can push to d5, and there's a... Well, you must be talking about something else. Um... Where in this forest of variations might we be talking? <laughs> Wait, did I have c6 here? Stockfish has c6 here, what gives? Can't you just do that? How is this at all pleasant for white? Oh. Again, white still hasn't castled. Otherwise, this would be an interesting position, but white hasn't castled yet. Man, that's tricky stuff. Um, so yeah, white probably wouldn't play knight b5, but if he did, black would have to find c6. Um, and I guess the point of knight b5 is to gain tempos while um, disallowing bishop takes knight. And trying to play f4 and the bishop back and pawn fork. Um... It just doesn't work out here. I mean, I guess white plays f4 according to Stockfish, and I just go back, and black's okay. I was not ready for this. 
I was not ready for queen d3 and knight f6. Um, but it raises the question, why am I playing this sideline to begin with? And the reason is because I prefer to play this bishop c5. Suddenly I'm not liking bishop c5 so more. Um, bishop b4 is a theoretical alternative here. And it's just a completely different game. You just play, play bishop c4 and you just play chess. Um, sometimes this is overextended. I avoid this because um, with the white pieces, if we look at this this way, I don't tend to play this position very often. And so for me, we'll look at this from the black perspective again. For me to go into this and say, I'm going to play bishop b4 is a little bit foolhardy, even though this is a good move. Um, so we looked at bishop c5. I don't like it anymore. Bishop b4 is something I'm not going to pull anytime soon. I've played bishop e7 before, and it's not very exciting. Um, knight f6 allows white to dictate the pace of the game, and that's not something I'm going to let happen. <laughs> so I think by process of elimination, there's a couple theoretical moves left here. And let's just open up, not, not the AI, not some engine. Yeah, so g6 I was going to suggest. I mean, I've seen d6 play. d6 is okay. I don't like it. It's okay, though. I've certainly played d6 without knight c6, so it's got to be fine here. Um, actually, maybe that's what I do. Sure, it stops me from playing bishop c5. Sure, bishop c5 is what I want to play like in every game because I always want to checkmate white on the king side, but um, no, d6 is reasonable. I was about to suggest, why don't I just play f5? Just make things fun. Um, it's just too dangerous and too risky, especially when I can get those same kinds of positions playing d6 first, and now f5 is a lot stronger with the bishop backing it up. And so white has to choose. Does he play d4? Does he play bishop b5, bishop c4, or something else? Um, so. Okay. Yeah, f5 is interesting. I've looked at those positions before. I'm not going to look at them right now. Feel free to look at them, and if you find a way that it's not terrible for black, let me know. But yeah there's no reason to play f5 when you can just do d6 first and then f5 uh, there's really no benefit into changing the move order um, because i can't imagine that there are any positions where you play f5 um, where you don't play d6 I mean, maybe you want to play bishop c5 first, but that falls into the fork trick that we saw in the game. Uh, maybe you want to play bishop b4, but I said that's if I wanted to play it, I would have played it before playing f5, and I don't. Um, bishop e7 doesn't change whether or not you play f6 or d6. Um, you could play d6 here, but you've transposed, so why bother? Maybe there's some reason to do it transposition-wise. You want to like slow down white from playing d4, slow him down from playing this, but it's risky. Um, and the only real benefit would be if you don't want to play d5 or d6, if you want to play d5, um, then it would make sense to play f5 first. But this is just super ultra risky and I'm not going to play it. And AI says that white's winning by at least two pawns here. Yeah, bishop b5 looks particularly devastating. Um, so, with that all said, if I'm going to play f5, and I, I really do like this idea, I'm going to prepare it with d6 first. And force white to choose where is he going to go. And, okay, maybe if he plays bishop b5, maybe I change my mind and say, you know, maybe f5 is not for me. Um, just on account of this being kind of scary. But if white plays some other move, like if he, I don't know, if he plays d4, 
okay, I can take here and we're I get in knight f6 and all the stuff that I played in the game or wanted to play in the game, I guess. And I could play g6 and bishop g7 and there's really nothing to worry about. Um, or if I play d6 and if he plays d3, then f5 is strong. If he plays bishop c4, I think I can play f5 here. This is playable, right? Okay, we're gonna turn off the computer because it doesn't know. <laughs> There aren't any games in the master database, which suggests that there's a better move than f5 here. Um, so yeah, uh, I think I can conclude um, just that this particular way of playing it, um, bishop c5 is not something I want to pursue much longer, just because it exposes too many pieces and leaves the center um, uncontrolled. I have played Rui Lopez's with uh, knight g e7 and g6 and bishop g7. Uh, sorry about the circles there. I had played that before. Um, and that's fine. And I could try to do something similar, but I think this is too fluid for me to play g6 right away. I know masters have played g6 here, but I, I think it's too fluid for me to do that. Um, for the same reasons as we saw in the game. And knight g e7 is kind of limiting, so I think d6 is probably a reasonable approach to this position. Um, and really, I think the only move I'm concerned about here is bishop b5, against which I don't want to play f5 anymore. Um, pretty sure that uh, I mean, okay, yeah, white could play d3, and all the masters are choosing that here. Um, if I study that, maybe it makes sense. Uh, does this transpose to anything? No. Some masters have never been in that position, at least in this database. Um, so, you know, maybe f5 still makes sense there. It's just like a delayed Schliemann, where white's or especially when where white's played knight c3 and black's played d6. And white can play d3 and we just get a passive little game here going and I think this is fine. It's like a king's gambit declined reversed, if there is such a thing. Um, but what makes me uncomfortable is that I've seen this position from the other side. And what I mean by that I'm going to turn this off because it's distracting. This e4, e5, f4, bishop c5, and then like knight f3, d6. And we get the same kind of pawn structure, and I play this as black because I believe in it. I believe that this, um, this weakness along the diagonal is kind of a problem. So that's why I hesitate to allow bishop b5. Well, now I'm contradicting myself. I was going to say I hesitate here, knight c3, uh, d6, bishop b5. I hesitate to allow this, uh, d3, uh, because it's the same pawn structure but up a move. And I think this is a problem for black. Um, I think it wouldn't be as much of a problem if this pawn were on d5 instead of d6. Um, so what can I do? Um, hmm. yeah, I'm not sure. Anyhow, I was going to say, against this, I would hesitate to play f5. Somehow against bishop c4, I wasn't so afraid to play it here. Which makes no sense. No, it's illogical. Because um, we get the same structure here, and this is the king's gambit declined reversed, if, they're, if you want to call it that. Um, but here... I mean, sure, yeah, white's up the tempo on the king's gambit declined. Uh, here, white's no longer threatening to push d4. And that's 
uh, comforting for black. So the onus is on white to find some kind of advantage here, whereas after bishop b5 it seems a lot clearer in my mind that white's got an advantage. Um, after this, f5 seems too weakening, but all the masters play here is just d3. I don't know. Yeah, now this, I mean, no master has played this, but this concerns me a lot more. Masters don't need to play risky moves like this, but this is a lot more worrying to me. Um, okay, so white, or black breaks the pin, white castles. Um, yeah, I think black needs to get a move on castling. So I think, so we see this is plus 1.5-ish. Whereas if we go back to um, uh, d6, bishop c4, f5, I think we're going to see it's not 1.5 anymore. Okay, yeah, white can play d4, but black can combat this pretty effectively, I think. Okay, yeah, bishop g7's reasonable. We see this is only plus one, it's not plus one and a half. And, and that's kind of what I was getting at, is that this bishop's... It looks nice, it threatens your scholar's mate right there, uh, if the queen could somehow get out. But um, it's also kind of exposed in the center. Um, okay, computer's evaluation keeps revising upward, whatever. I think this is playable for black. And I think that other position where the bishop's pinning the knight and e5 is loose and black still hasn't castled, I don't think that's any good. But I think this one might be okay. Uh, it's dangerous. Extremely dangerous. But maybe I don't want to play either one of these. Maybe after some kind of bishop move like that, maybe I don't want to go play f5 anymore. What about d4? Can I play f5 here? That's not f5. Let's try f5. Okay, so f5 just doesn't work in any of these positions. I want it to work, but black's just down too many tempi. Uh, so if we really want to play f5, then that says that this is our time to do it. Um, again, d4 is what concerns me the most. Um, I guess... Having saved the tempo on d6 is kind of important. Um, but yeah, this whole idea is kind of busted. Um, I mean, yeah, one could argue for this, and I've seen people play that, Latvian. Latvian's a lot of fun. Um, it's actually not unsound, so... Oh, and I guess one bonus here is that yeah, not only has white not played bishop c4 or bishop b5, but this pawn, if it ever does land on d5, doesn't kick the knight right away. So there goes the tactic we saw in the game. So if I'm really hell-bent on doing this sort of thing, and I know that white's going to play knight c3, I could try to do this in advance. Um, but if he does play knight c3, I need to find an opening move I'm happy with. Um... So back we go. Bishop b5 it is. Because I really don't want to play the four knights. Four knights just seems like if I get paired with somebody who's a 1600, or somebody who's just lower rated than me and they play the four knights, chances are we're going to get a sterile position where nothing's really going on. I could study all the four knights lines and maybe prove some advantage in each one. But why not study a single line and try to make that single line work? Even where it's a little more disadvantageous, if it's at least forcing, I have some chance of um, realistically getting an advantage against um, an opponent without having studied tons and tons and tons of theory. So this might be the way to go. 
I know I said I don't play this very often. Uh, yeah, I don't believe in this knight d5 nonsense, but... Um, sure, that's playable. We're turning off the computer here, because it's, it's wrong. Yeah, bishop e7's theory, bishop a5's theory. Knight f6 is okay, but... I mean... You've given up the bishop pair, and that's not something you want to do without some kind of... Uh, getting something for it. Um, this seems perfectly fine, and I've seen this before. But yeah, knight d5 is not a white place. I say that masters have played this quite a bit. I've been told that white does not play bishop or knight d5 in these lines because uh, it's just silly. It's, why would you move a piece twice in the opening? I guess to force your opponent to move twice. But here, after bishop c5, we've gone into pretty much no man's land, as far as theory is concerned. And that's not something masters do very often. So I'm surprised to see that they would play, they would all play this knight d5 and risk this possibility of getting a position they've never seen before. I mean, this seems just ludicrous. I have once seen this position before, but, um, yeah. It just seems completely crazy to me that the Master Game Database contains this move so many times. If I had to guess, the, um, let's see, who are our top games? We've got Andreakin, we've got Michael's Bart. We see here, okay, there's the one game where White outrates his opponent by 150 points. Here, White's underrated. Here, White's underrated. Here white's underrated, and that, that's what I was going to say, is that likely white's giving up control. It's likely he's playing this knight d5 move to try to get his opponent out of book. And we see, um, um, okay, I guess white did have some success in these games. Um, against Sokolov? How did Sokolov lose that? Okay, here's Sokolov's game. I've got a lot of respect for the man, but how did he lose this? I need to know. Um, I don't like this position at all. Now let's take a look. Yeah, Sokolov is down by two points here. It's just that bad. I don't like that at all. How about back here? Still plus two. I think he underestimated this queen a4. So, yeah, I mean, if he just castles... I've actually... Was it this game or was it something else? I've seen this structure... Pawn d5, I've seen this, and this, and this, probably this, that. I've seen all these pieces on this particular formation in a high-level game before. Perhaps it was this game. Um, I doubt it. Maybe it was something from the Pandolfini book. Um, anyway... So, oh dear, would you look at that, I'm being hosted for so many viewers. Um, so yeah, we're just looking at the opening theory behind my game there, and how I managed to blow it. Um, for those of you who missed the game, here it is. So we got a three knights opening, uh, let me turn that off. And then after our three knights opening, I played bishop c5, avoiding the four knights defense. Um, in hindsight, the four knights defense isn't that bad. It's just something I didn't want to play today. Um, 
because I don't want to play that in a tournament. It's just depressing playing it. Um, done a lot of opening theory study after the game, try to figure out what is it that I do want to play in tournaments, because evidently the line that I would prefer to play in tournaments um, has now been busted by our friend Al Bundy here. Uh, busted from the perspective of, well, we'll see. So we exchange there, exchange here. This is what I've been playing over the board. See queen d3, which I've not seen before. And I wanted to play something a bit ambitious, something to really make my opponent think. And so I played g6. And we saw, or at least I saw from a lot of post-mortem analysis that this move is just way too slow. It's asking for trouble. I thought I could handle it. I couldn't. That's basically what it came down to. Um, I was playing black this game, so I don't get to play the bird. Um, oh, cool. Well, welcome, Jessica. Um, I mean, so people say I should play the four knights. Problem with playing the four knights is you have to be prepared for this. You have to be prepared for this. You have to be prepared for this. You have to prepare for this. Maybe prepare for this. Maybe don't worry about it. Who cares? Um, maybe prepare for that. And also this. This one isn't as troubling as the rest, but um, still have to be ready for it. Uh, so we see there's tons of theory on the Four Knights opening, and people play it all the time. And if I could just study one of those lines and be happy with it, that'd be cool. I don't have the luxury of, I mean, maybe I do, but I doubt it. Even if I have the luxury of the free time to study it, I'm not going to remember all of those lines and remember how to get in some kind of imbalance or advantage in each one of them. And I've played this in prior tournaments, and usually I've gotten something that goes a bit like this. D3, D6, castle, castle, bishop G5, here, bishop takes, um, I mean I've had some games where it's gone bishop H4 too. Uh, maybe not this exact position. Maybe white is interpolated, bishop takes c6. Uh, no, no he hasn't. Um, yeah, I mean, just take here, queen takes, knight d5, queen d8. Bishop takes is not what white plays, because that's bad. But, I mean, this sort of thing is just really unpleasant and what's black aiming for okay he's got a bishop here that's about it yeah you, know, you need to open the center and make something happen but i've had tournament games that go on like this and it takes you 40 50 60 moves to try to get some kind of end game where black has some kind of theoretical advantage due to the bishop pair then you have to nuance your way through all that and i just don't really care for that it's not what I'm going to play. I'm not going to spend an hour or more in a tournament game playing that kind of stuff against somebody who's all booked up on it. It's just not an exciting game. Um, I want to play something more interesting. So what have I missed here? Um, oh, Cheska won a crushing Four Nights game last week. Haha, <laughs> that's pretty... Oh, wait, now I've seen that. I, I, I looked at that game last week. Is the one I'm thinking of? Uh, is it still here? Where is it? 1510. Yeah, this one. Oh, had I but known, had I connected the dots, I mean, I could have prepared for this. Not that I knew I was going to get chess kid here or Al Bundy but uh, this kind of position is kind of interesting because you don't get all that positional maneuvering stuff you get 
get a tactical game going out of this. A lot of things are possible here. This is not your typical Four Knights game. Oh, and for reference, um, in school I used to play this sort of stuff all the time, and I used to play Knight Takes D4 here. And I was that guy. I was that guy where I just play this and play that, and it's like white's got this small nagging advantage that's really challenging for black to do anything about. I was that guy. And while I'm on the subject of just irritating chess openings, uh, let's see, do I still remember this one? This is fun stuff too. Let's see, is this it? And then, was it queen f6? Um, knight c3, knight e7, something like this. Um, I'm misremembering something important here. There's a joke at the end. Don't worry. I'm just trying to remember how to get to the punchline. Um, is this hanging here? I don't know. Maybe it was this. Uh, some knight takes. The point is that in some line this is hanging. That's not the exact position. I've delivered the joke quite poorly. Um, but no, I've caught people on that kind of discovery tactic before. Um, so I was all about these nonsense openings that are pretty unambitious, um, that just have tons of traps in them. Ah. So we're, we're doing analysis at the moment. Um, maybe sometime I could help with that, Zug. Um, I'd be glad to give it a shot. So anyhow, this is the game that happened, um, that Al Bundy played in the latter last week. And I saw this game, um, yeah. not during it, but afterward. And I didn't take the time to study this sort of thing. If I remember right, Black could just play bishop c5 and this is okay. Maybe I don't remember right. Um, yeah, Stockfish says it's okay. Can't be that bad. Or at least whatever engine this is says it's okay. So we got that going for us. Um, Bishop e7 is the master move. Knight to b4 is playable. <laughs> Almost none of the masters play bishop c5. Whatever. Uh, yeah, if I had more time, I could study these sorts of things. This would be fun. But I usually don't bother studying this sort of thing because nobody plays this. That, or at least it's really unpopular. Um, yeah, and Black just took the bait. Not that it's bait, but I mean, why would you go into your opponent's preparation? That's horrifically unwise. Just don't do it. Uh, Alright, so... Yeah. Anyhow, if I'd known that we were going to go into the Belgrade, I would have given this a shot. I really would have. But this is not what I was expecting. Uh, and I guess more importantly, that's not the kind of tournament repertoire I play, because for tournaments, I mean, this is the sort of thing I do, uh, used to do at one point and got pretty bored of it and just question why am I playing in tournaments against lower rated players to begin with. Um, yeah, I did manage to win games this way, but it's just no fun. It's not interesting. And so more recently I've taken to this move, um, and I keep interrupting myself, but uh, my point was that I was trying to play g6 here and innovate and say, oh, you know, this is clever. Let's bring the bishop back. Okay, white plays f4, but what am I afraid of? Um, so we saw bishop e3. So white's not castling kingside. He's castling queenside. This diverts a bit from what I expected. 
So suddenly this g6 where I'm intending, oh yeah, I'll just casually go back, play the knight forward, and you know, he can't push his pawns forward because he's going to castle this way. Or he's not going to push his pawns forward because he just doesn't have time to do it. Um, that, that's kind of what my theory was, that there's just no time in which to for him to play these things. Um, and okay, technically maybe I'm right, maybe if I don't play d6, maybe I'm only down 0.6 points or whatever you want to say, but um, that requires razor accurate calculation and alertness and awareness, and that's not something I had today. Uh, okay, what am I missing here? Oh, yeah, yeah, the Halloween you're talking about? Yeah, no, that's... I'm sorry, you're not talking about Halloween. You're just talking about Knight Takes E5 here. Yeah, Grandmaster Evans, I think, wrote a book called What's the Best Move? It's a multiple-choice um, book. It's like 100, maybe 150 pages. It's almost entirely pictures. And then there's a solutions guide in the back. And in each puzzle or each opening position... He asks you, which of these three moves is the best move for white or for black? And he covers all kinds of openings, and uh, Rui Lopez and four knights, three knights, two knights. Is there a one knight opening? Anyway, each of those um, are covered in that book. And uh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Uh, each of those are covered in the book. And I think Grandmaster Evans stated that after knight takes, knight takes d4, bishop d6, d takes, bishop takes, and then f4, white's better. Just because even if black takes here and doubles white's pawns, this is a wide open position and white has the bishop pair and controls the center. I've been kind of contesting that because I don't believe it. Um, and this is how I expected things to go. Um, but it turns out, queen d3 is pretty damn strong, too. And white gets to keep his knight, doesn't have to double any of his pawns, and gets to castle queenside with a really strong attack. So I don't have time for this kind of g6 stuff. I want to have time for it, but um, white plays bishop e3. And suddenly, like, a lot of positions you'll see I'll just drop the queen on b6 or a5. Um, sure, there's a pawn in the way at the moment, but I could put, like, d6, c6, and queen b6. And it's no big deal. But this preempts all that. This is really alert to what's going on. It centralizes the bishop and prepares to put the rook on a half-open file. This bishop e3 is really exact and don't believe these numbers here when it says g6 is 0.9 and bishop e3 is 0.6 um no this is just a good move this opens up the position and develops white's pieces in a way that makes it really tricky for black to find um optimal play okay objectively maybe it's not objectively best but this is really difficult for black to respond to uh what are we talking about now <laughs> this isn't a safe sideline. This is like nuclear pop. Zug, you have not seen my over the board games. You... Yeah, I mean, plus 0.9 isn't comforting anyhow. If you've seen some of my over the board games, like I've played a lot of G60, a game in one hour plus delay or increment. Um, generally, pretty minimal delay or increment. And. Perhaps because I'm playing such rapid games, maybe that's why I don't have experience playing good chess. But, no, plus 0.9 is perfectly normal in my over-the-board games. You've seen what extent I chime in in endgame positions and have a decent-ish understanding of what's going on. The same can hardly be said of my opening theory. Um... I really haven't taken a very studied approach to opening theory. I've just more or less looked at what looks interesting. And um, 
I've not prepared a repertoire, and I, I'm constantly working and improving on that, but I don't have a good repertoire. And I'm never really happy with any opening that I get. I've studied tons and tons of openings, but I'm not really content or happy with any of them, so I just keep searching. It's like Don Quixote, just always looking out there, uh, playing some risky moves, but whatever. Um, yeah, no, there's, yeah, you're right that with the proper knowledge and skill and training, there's got to be something that's a boundary or some, some compromise is the word, not boundary. There's got to be something, some middle ground between just completely nonsense stuff like g6 and d6 here where I'm just slowly allowing my opponent to maul me over. Um, there's some compromise between that um, and between boring. And I just need to invest some time and effort into studying things that I'll be satisfied with. And what's challenging in that regard is that I like to play open games. And it's really difficult to get imbalances in open games that don't screw you over. It's really tough. Um, yeah. Understandably, e5 is a thing to avoid if you want to avoid dry positions. Um, I know recently I have started watching a streamer who plays this fairly frequently. Um, and gotta say he's making some compelling arguments and it's not um, it's not ca uh, capitulating so quickly but maybe what I need to go in for is like d5 okay this creates imbalances and I've never really been happy with it but um, I don't know this just seems too overplayed I want to play something that's not so popular uh, challenge with that is how can it be good if it's not popular? For a while I did study the Peerts. Um, not too happy with that either. Um, when I was in high school, one of the more feared high school players in our state uh, played the Modern. Every game. E4, G6. And if you played D4, you play G6. And Chess Master is once asked, you know, I wonder what he would play if he did b3 on move 1. And I think somebody tried it and he just played g6 anyway. But anyway, so, yeah, the modern is perfectly respectable. And maybe that's where I need to be looking. Although it's, as it says, it's hyper-modern. And it's, I don't know. It's not leading to an open game for sure. Um... I could try the queen d6 line in uh, the, what's this, the Scandinavian. I could try that. This is more modern theory on the Scandinavian. This actually, yeah, I could try this. I could maybe be happy with that. <laughs> it's good, but you're going to have to get wrecked often because it's difficult. Yeah. But I think I'm okay with that. I don't mind playing difficult things. As we saw in the game, I mean, I allowed that knight takes e5, which is Evans, if I remember right, he just says don't play this uh, particular line because knight takes e5 and black's ruined. And... I'm perfectly willing to go in against difficult positions, so maybe that's the sort of thing I go for. Um, yeah, you can move order into just about anything here, so you could play like knight f6 or knight c6. Or I mean, the other thing I did study for a time, which is kind of interesting, is the Karokan. Uh, I forget why I got frustrated with this one. It's playable. Like, as white, I play f3 just because I'm crazy. But, um. I think, though, no, just because this got played so much in the Kasparov Deep Blue match, um. 
this is just too rigid for my taste and that, <laughs> I mean I'm just really super picky um, and I like to play crazy things so it's probably better that I try to stick with something that's not refuted or I'm sorry that's when I say refuted I'm referring to what I played in the game it's better that I stick with something like this where okay it's difficult but I could play this I could learn it I could eventually get the hang of it and it's not bad it leads to an open game and it's not so clear where white's weaknesses are um, I mean white's got seven pawns that none of which are really weak all of them are pretty well defended by each other and even if you do hit any one of them the other ones move and I mean it, yeah, th at this point it's crazy to talk about pawn weaknesses because there really isn't any. So, no, I might. Ch yeah, no. When I was back in high school, that was something I looked into too. Was the Philidor. Uh, for those of you who don't know, although I assume you all do. Yeah, no, this definitely appealed to me. Um, at the high school level, I gave it up because I was, well. I did play it for maybe a few games. I don't remember how many. Maybe a dozen. I, some number. Um, but I gave it up because I started winning too much with other lines. Other just being the main open lines. I just won too much with this um, that I never even bothered going back to this. Um, but you know, now that I'm starting to see challenges with the stuff that I play, um, this is worth considering. <laughs> uh, I know somebody, uh, nice day who studied this stuff and concludes that white's better. And white is. Um, it's more or less proven. It's complicated stuff, but why study something that's not so good? The Philidor is respectable. Um, I did have a number of games in high school that went this way, too. Um, and yeah, it's, it's all fine. It's all playable. It's, I like to play these bishop c5, bishop b4 kinds of things in a lot of positions, but, um, we saw in the game that my bishop ended up on e5 and I dropped it back here because that's where I wanted to put it anyway. Well, why go through all the trouble? Why not just play it this way? And if I really want, and if I have the time to do it, more importantly, because sometimes I might not, then I could play g6 and fianchetto, but I might not have time to do that. Quite a few lines. So this is... yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the Latvian is like, if you get lucky, you can get an almost equal position where your opponent's confused. Um, but if you're not lucky, you just get at a disadvantage and you suffer. Your opponent's still confused, but they can still play it out. And, I mean, I've had opponents back in high school who would play the Latvian, and I think my first encounter with it cold turkey I just had no idea what was going on um, if I remember it right and I probably don't um, I took and somehow my knight ended up back on e3 and my opponent had no idea what was going on either because he never sees the knight go to e3 now against a more prepared opponent that wouldn't be the case. My opponent would actually know what's going on. Uh-oh. Lee Chess is seeing problems. Anyway, um, so what are we reading here? <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, I think uh, fate has quite a point that uh, Scandinavian with queen d6 is something where I might not get bored with it and at the same time it's flexible enough that um, I could be happy with it. Uh, it offers opportunities for me. 
Um, now, maybe someday I do get bored of playing open games, and maybe I need something for that day, but in general, playing open games is kind of my style. And that's wonderful how the page refreshed and lost all my analysis, but whatever. Um, yeah, this kind of position uh, with queen d6 allows me to get an open game. And at the moment I do enjoy playing open games, uh, just because they're really tactical and exciting. And um, generally, when the, all the smoke clears, we get end games, and the end games are pretty decent for me. And even when the end game's not, like, um, not in my advantage or even objectively lost, I've turned quite a few of those around too. Not that that's what I should be aiming to do, but um, we saw here that in the game, and I have to go back to the game because we've been missing it quite a bit. Um, okay, I got mauled here. It was just a slaughter, really. But if somehow I were to manage to get this into an endgame, um, like during the game I was discussing this possibility, and okay, so we can't move the knight there and win the queen, so I don't know, maybe it's the knight away. And maybe, say, play something less aggressive like that. Okay, I guess we're still in middle game territory, but say we do somehow transition to an end game. This is something I could play. Okay, I'm down a piece. Doesn't really... I mean, this is bad, but I don't know. Like, proving the win for white's not so easy. Um, so even when things have completely irreversibly gone awry, even that I can try to salvage. Um, yeah, you know, this is a complete and total disaster in terms of the middle game, but if somehow I did manage to transition to an end game, this is, I don't know, I tend to get end games that are difficult for my opponents to win. Um, I don't think trading pieces uh, what I'm trying to say is that if pieces trade down in open games, I tend to get playable positions, and most of the time my opponent doesn't know what an endgame is, and so I'm able to win those quite a lot. Um, now granted, my middle game positions are pretty atrocious, um, and if we back up here, um, like, obviously I was not aware of what was going on here. And I did see this h6 possibility, and I thought knight d5 was advantageous, and I just flat out completely blew it. Um, I thought that white was winning here, and I discredited this and said that, no, this is nothing. Turns out black's okay. Um, and if I had just figured that out, I mean, so if I had just played h6 here, I wouldn't have died in the middle game, and I could have survived to an end game where White's got this weakened pawn. He's pushed pretty aggressively. Okay, I haven't developed yet, but my pieces are on the long diagonal. In, in terms of an end game, this is difficult for White. In terms of the middle game, maybe not so much, but for an end game, um, I don't know. This is. I tend to get positions where my opponent's not able to trade, because if he does trade, I'll get a game that I'm able to play. Um, I completely missed h6. Well, I saw h6, and I saw knight d5 and freaked out, and just didn't think this queen takes b2 was anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yep, yep. Yep, there's, yeah, there's no end game here. There's no way that pieces could ever get traded down in this position. It's just unfathomable that a trade could occur. Um, 
I mean, yeah, we're not saying that on move 15 it's all going to liquidate and boil down. I'm just saying I have a disposition for open games um, because open games tend to trade down. And once you've traded down, we get fun in games, and end games are always fun. And yeah. No, my optimism comes to the fact that I just really like end games. And I wish that you would start the game without half the pieces and you could just play it out. Um, and by you, I mean both players, not that one player starts with a half the pieces handicap, because that'd be kind of crazy. But um, yeah, it's, it's really not logic. It's just emotion. But I like open games. And the point I'm trying to make is that in open games, um, even when things don't go in my favor, I'm able to trade things down quite often. And once things trade down, I'm able to win end games. And I'm just good at end games. It's like the one part of chess I'm okay at. Um, yeah. Yeah. Morphe's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, Morphe would blindfolded, he would beat people, so I mean, he's kind of on a different level than where I'm at, but yeah, you're right that open games do tend to lead to checkmates, um, and I'd have a long way to go if I were to play like Morphe or like Tall, um, but uh, yeah, that's not going to happen anytime soon, for sure. Uh, okay, what is this link? Oh, yeah, you're right, the site's down at the moment. I could bring it back up. Um, yeah, these days, um, yeah, an IM would be at the kind of strength that Morphe was at. Um, if you were to take people out of their time periods and do that kind of comparison, sure. I mean, um, if you're comparing just percentile-wise, obviously Morphe was one of the strongest players in the world at that point. Um, but yeah, in terms of his just raw ability, sure. He didn't, he wasn't some kind of god. He was just quite good. <laughs> um, and I'm just saying under today's circumstances, if I'm to play like Morphe, and that's way, way, way off... But even if I were to do that, that wouldn't be good enough, or I wouldn't be happy with it. Maybe I would. Depends who I'm playing against. Um, oh yeah, there's the Chigorin, or Chigorin, sorry. Yeah, let's not forget that. That one's good fun. Um, if I remember right... Maybe I'm misremembering. Maybe there's another way this comes about. Yeah. The Chigorin defense. Which Lee Chess has truncated to Chig. Great. Um, so yeah. yeah. Great players are not remembered for endgame play. Minus a few. There are some who are well known for their endgame play. Um, but not in early chess. Yeah, in early chess, you see a lot of stuff. I mean, you have, for crying out loud, the Evans Gambit. Okay. There's nothing endgamey or subtle about this. And in some ways, I kind of wish that this weren't a thing. I don't know. I just really enjoy these lines. Um, irrationally so. Not because of the mainline stuff, which is just like knight d2 or bishop d2, and it's all sound and stuff, but this, these fireworks are fun. Um, I kind of wish that chess could start from this too. I would lose against strong players maybe 99 times out of 100 here, just because it's just that wildly tactical and unpredictable. Um, Against low-rated players, though, this is...
quite fun for white. Um, but yeah, I need to study more main lines and less of this kind of nonsense. Ah, how to win? Well, first you take your opponent's pieces and then you checkmate them. Um, a lot of players do this, but um, it's not easy. I'm still trying to figure out how to win. It's, uh, I don't know. What, the way you win at chess is by having fun. If you're not having fun, you're not playing it right. Um, so you have to find what suits your style and what do you play right and what do you play wrong. Um, so this game, I played g6 and d6 because I was just at a loss knowledge-wise about what's going on here. And since this is a 15-minute game plus increment, but let's be real, uh, I didn't have time to calculate it all out. And I don't have the skill of a stronger player of being able to identify... Um, candidate moves or tabia the same way that they would. And so while it's obvious to strong players that what I'm playing is just utter crock and nonsense, I didn't know that. And um, we'll, we'll go through this from my perspective. Um, I thought this was quite okay. And even this I thought was okay. I did consider knight h6 and I saw h3 and said you know maybe I don't want to play that I did consider bishop g4 saw bishop e2 and said if I can avoid trading pieces and accelerating my opponent's attack I'll avoid that for now um, my big idea was to play my knight out to c6 and I just didn't think white's attack was moving fast enough uh, so he pushed h4 I considered h5 but I mean I've asked for so much trouble with the way I've played this opening. Um, this is just not how most players want to play. And even when you do play this way for black, um, and you do ask for trouble and try to make things imbalanced and exciting, you want to have time on your clock to analyze these sorts of things. And this is just way easier for white to play than it is for black. Um, now Stockfish uh, evaluated this as plus one, that's 0.7. Whatever, my reaction was that with the pawn in h4, he can't play h3 and g4 anymore. So he's given up this g4 square. I didn't expect him to do that. I thought he'd play, play bishop e2 and that this would be a lot slower. Um, and I thought if he did play bishop e2 that I would have time to finish my development maybe with bishop e6 and queen d7 or something um, maybe with knight c6 and queen f6 threatening stuff on e b2 maybe putting my queen on e7 somehow I thought this bishop would just go here and I would be okay but um, the way it played out I didn't want to play h5 here because it's just too weakening. Um, I mean, that's kind of suicide here. So bishop g4 is what I opted for. Um, castling is probably stronger than bishop g4, but castling has all kinds of problems of its own. Um, like if I just castle here, just bishop e2, and now this is kind of hard to stop, and black hasn't gone very far. So I didn't want to commit, but if I had committed, um, maybe I could have done something to shake this up and slow this down. And uh, it's it's playable, but it's not good. Yeah. So the way I played it just allowed White a completely free attack, where I tried to trade to maybe slow this down. Um, I expected queen back, even though it's not so good, because it's more flexible and it hits h5 and gets the half-open file for the rook and maybe allows him to play e4 at some point and maybe knight e4. 
Um, but Knight takes is really strong because this Knight's regrouping to go places. Um, and I didn't want to see this Knight go places, so I played this Knight to C6. Um, because this Knight, I mean, if it if he were poised to go to d5, I could always kick the knight with c6. But now that he has other places to move the knight, like g3 and h5 and f5, I'm considering maybe I don't want to castle this way anymore. So he plays h5. I play this thinking I'm all clever for gaining a tempo and being able to castle. And I just completely misevaluate this position. So yeah, I needed to play h6 here. Somehow I thought after all the smoke cleared and like he's got knight d5, he's maybe got e5, maybe he got pawn takes g6. There's all these things to worry about, but none of them quite work out. Um, so after any or all of these, I'm just a-ok -okay because I get to castle. It's not fun. Um, it's not the way I'd want to play it, but black can survive that. Yeah. Um, so. Okay, let's see. What are we missing here? So knight c3. Um... Oh yes, I just castled, and then we get the epic game conclusion, which here is that you got to play knight d5, and I saw that I get to play queen e6, and somehow turns ago I thought, you know, maybe this is okay for black. Uh, but no, b4 is very exacting. Uh, forces me to play knight e7, which I didn't play. Um, and I saw knight e7, and I saw bishop d4, and this, and this, and that. I didn't see queen c3, but by the time I got here, I got a general sense that the ship is sinking, and that this isn't what I want to play. But, you know, having made so many mistakes thus far, I don't get to choose what I play anymore. I have to react to what the position allows. In this case, it doesn't allow me to do very much. Um but I need to make the best of the chances I have remaining. Um, so, yeah, instead, I, instead of playing this knight e7, which I calculated was bad and uh, white's crushing black and black's struggling to stay afloat, I played this really combative move, this a6, and white immediately responds a4, and I don't know, I somehow thought this is too aggressive, but black can't develop any of his pieces, so there's really nothing black can do. So I answered with another combative move, because I'm trying to force white to react to what I'm doing. Um, and white just calmly plays on. And so, okay, at this point, because a6 is loose, I'm forced to exchange, that's fine. Um, and then I attempt to sack my knight. Again, I'm just trying to get him to react to what I'm doing. And he's having none of it. He's not taking my knight. Um, he's just dictating exactly the pace of the game, and I don't get much choice in the matter. So this is well played. Yeah, I can bring it up in a bit. It's just that my stream tends to crash when I have it up, so that's why it's not up at the moment. Um... Also, don't. <laughs> I mean, there's other reasons not to have it up too. Um, uh, so, yeah. So I played this again. I'm trying to sack my knight and get my pieces active, and it just goes completely downhill from here because the sack uh, allows this good developing move, and I assumed that I would get some kind of activity out of this. Rook B4 is accurate. Um, let's check. Probably accurate, I'm not sure. But the point is that Black's King is completely a sitting duck. 
And even if white takes his time and plays something calm and patient like rook d1, just preparing to checkmate, um, I mean, what's black going to do? The only way I can sack my or activate my pieces is by sacking even more material. And it's just exponentially more costly to do so. Um, so, yeah, castling king queenside was bad because h6 and knight d5 are just so super strong. Um, is this still worth analyzing? Well, okay. I mean, we could take a look at queen c3, I guess, just to point out that, like, what I was expecting here is something more like this. And suddenly I do have some central influence, and say if my opponent plays carelessly, I don't know. We have a game. No, that's not going to happen. Um... But, I mean, what can you do here? Maybe this is why he just went for queen c3. Oh, I'm sorry. This is what I was looking at. Yeah, I still need to know the answer. To, okay, I did figure that out during the game. Is that the best move? Wow. Okay. You know, during the game, I thought that this was going to be best. I did not calculate this accurately. Um... So what was I expecting here? I was thinking queen a6. I was just saying, I think I said that I'm not going to take back right away. Oh yeah, this is what I was looking at. And he takes here, and I've given up a pawn, in addition to everything I've already given up. Um, would you look at this? Hey, look, I get to attack the light squares too, and I get central influence. And it only cost me, what, the game to do it? But, um, you know, at least I got something going here. Yeah, queen c3 is just, <laughs> it's pretty devastating. Maybe there's some emotional aspect to this where I wanted the queen trade because I don't want to get mated and because I want to see an endgame. Any endgame, really. Um, there's some aspect where I thought, well, if he takes, I get to take back and then this knight's overloaded defending the bishop and has to move away and maybe I'm okay. Um... I mean, yeah, this, the idea that the queen could move did occur to me. I just, I was thinking queen a3. And queen c3 pins the knight, and yeah, I just don't have anything anymore. So yeah, that was quite good. Um, so we get this position, we got a few checks. Let's check, and here white got a bit confused, and it's not obvious what's going on. And, but yeah, white's totally winning. And we saw a checkmate over here. And that's how it went. Um, yeah. I mean, it wasn't entirely that I wanted to trade. I did want to activate my queen in the vicinity of your king. But my attack was just way too slow. And unfortunately for me, there's no escaping from this mating net. Um, I mean, yeah, back here, this is mate in six. I thought that I'd be able to do, like, king e6, king f5, and this rook can't go to b5, and I thought it'd be okay. Um, so that's why back here, well, I'm sorry, not back here, but back here, I played bishop c7 saying that, you know, I think that I'm able to stop checkmate, I'm not entirely sure, and I only have 20 seconds on my clock and I can't figure it out. But I thought that this bishop c7 was going to be good enough. Um, and no, after king takes, um, it's just over. 
Bishop c7 was best, but not for the reason I thought. It's best because of this possibility. And now white doesn't take here because um, the rook's hanging. So this is how it should have continued, but that point aside, yeah, this is pretty well played. I did find some interesting resources, but my position was terrible by that time. Why do I bring up my own? So my own server has my own AI on it, which I don't run while I'm playing ladder games. Um, because I don't want my stream to go down and because I don't use the AI while the ladder games are going on. So there's like multiple reasons not to have it up while I'm doing the stream. Um, so, yeah. Had I taken some more time, I could have figured this out and saw that rook e8 was best, but I'm busted in any event. So this bishop c7, though it was clever and was supposed to discourage him from taking it, he took it anyway. So, very well calculated. Um, okay, so in doing roofing opening positions, I did find this Sokolov game. Um... I don't know if I've seen this exact one before, but I've certainly seen this structure before. Uh, and I was just using this as a point of reference to say, you know, these games where black plays bishop b4 aren't so fun. And it's quite spectacular that Sokolov managed to lose this. Yeah, I have seen this before. Um, I've definitely seen this particular game. It's amazing that somebody of his level did not win this. Not just didn't win it, but I mean, he just got rolled. If I remember right. Then maybe there's... Oh! So there's this discovery. So maybe that's kind of a coincidence, but in any event... Um, it's... I don't know. It's a fun game. What was it about this? Ah, uh, so okay, this is this discovery that was made possible. So back here, bishop to f4 is possible because of the discovery with this sack on e7. All of this is sound, by the way, I've looked it over. Um, yeah, now that's kind of what I was aiming for. I don't think you knew this par particular structure very well. I mean, okay, yeah, you know f4, but you've never seen this bishop g7 in that kind of situation. Granted, it looks almost exactly like a dragon, and you're able to figure it out, but you've not seen it before is the point. Um, yeah, taking all the material and praying, at least Sometimes it'll fail spectacularly, sometimes it'll work out, and then you'll play the ones that work out and just keep sticking with those more often. But yeah, today was an experiment for sure, uh, and it backfired hugely. Um, so... Um, but yeah, I was just... Earlier, I don't know if Zug was there or not, but I was showing that Sokolov game where um, uh, he managed to, I don't know, get miniatured, even playing something as innocent as bishop b4. And that, I mean, it's going to happen to everybody, and I don't know the circumstances of the game. It probably wasn't the strongest or the most critical game ever, but... I was just saying, like, um, that's why I avoided that kind of position, is because I'm not comfortable with that stuff. But, yeah, I agree with Zug's analysis here. This is a Philidor, or Black's just down Tempi. Um, uh, so to give you an idea where I was out of book here, this is where I was out of book. I fully expected F4... And I've seen f4, bishop takes, pawn takes before. And I was ready to go for that. It's disgusting, but 
Um, I was ready to try that. I'm not saying that my book knowledge of Bishop C5 is in any way accurate, but this is what I've played over the board to um, stick to things I'm more familiar with. And most players just acquiesce and play something innocuous like Bishop B5, Bishop C4, Bishop E2, uh, D3, um, maybe Knight D5, maybe G3. Um, almost all of them don't take the pawn, and even the ones who do take the pawn usually don't know what they're doing. So that's how I've managed to make it this far, being completely ignorant um, and getting into this position and even occasionally getting here and getting opponents who don't know what to do. Um, but that's no excuse for me playing this uh, or being prepared to play this in a tournament. Um, so it makes a lot more sense for me to go just directly into a Philidor. Oh, um, yeah, I just, I don't want the four knights. I mean, yeah, the four knights, perfectly normal. Um, I'm not sure if you're talking about this. Oh, I'm sorry, you're talking about this here. You know, knight f6 just being normal. Yeah, no, I could do that. Um, I'm just saying there's... Yeah, I, I can do that. I'm just saying there's more theory for me to learn. It's not very much more, but... Um, I'm just saying if knight f6 is one thing I've got to learn, then I've got to figure out what about other moves here? What about bishop e3? What about bishop d2? What about queen d2? Queen d2 is bad. What about... Well, I guess I know what to do against f4. I mean, there's other stuff for me to be worried about. And even if I do know that knight f6 is accurate, the suggested main line here is knight b5 to avoid the bishop for knight trade. Um, and, okay, white's maybe preparing to play c3 and knight d4 or bishop e2 and castle or what have you. And so black wants to try to trade the bishop for the knight because black's cramped here. So the suggested main line goes c6 and then there's not knight d6 here. Just it doesn't work out. Unlike a Sicilian, I'm sorry not a Sicilian, there's some position. There's some e4 opening where this... Hmm. I'm sorry it's a Sicilian with e6 where this works out. And, after queen e7, there's queen c7, and I'd say, okay, here, that's not so fine. Here, just if knight d6, we trade off. Oh, and e4 is hanging is the point. I mean, even if this were okay, and this weren't hanging, this isn't what white wants to play. If you were to move this pawn over here, white would be okay with that sort of thing, but here this is just no fun for white, so uh, c6 is the point. Suggested continuations, f4, bishop b8, knight c3, d6, bishop e3. I think, I don't object to any of the engine's moves, by the way. Um, but yeah, knight f6 is good, it's just, it's complicated. And um, If I'm going to take chances, okay, I could be maybe content with this, but I think there are better chances elsewhere. And that's why I kept looking earlier for things like the Latvian or the Philidor or the Modern because yeah I could play this but I want to look for other chances yeah it's not terrible I just feel there there's something better elsewhere yeah ladder just means um, that when you beat players you get paired up against stronger players when you lose to players, you get paired down against um, people who have lost more games. Um, and so this week I lost another game. Uh, yeah, this is A-OK, -okay, but it's definitely a weird position. Knight b5 I would not have guessed. And I'm guessing that knight b5 is not the only thing to be concerned about either. <laughs> so knight f6 is fine. It's just weird. Just have to be ready, and there's, I just, I want to find something earlier that diverges less, 
something where I can better control what's going on. And so something like a Philidor would fit the bill for that. Yeah, well, objectively, g6 is just bad or losing here. The way it actually played out with bishop e3, this makes it really uncomfortable for, for black. So where I normally would play something like queen f6, queen b6 to just throw the opponent off their game, I can't do that. This bishop already preempts that. Or maybe somehow I end up do playing c6. I can't play queen b6 in these lines either. Um, so it's really tricky to find a good square for my queen after my other pieces are developed. Um, and I made a mistake right back playing d6, just thinking that white's... On account of not having played bishop d2, I thought that white's attack on the king's side with potentially a rook e1 would be slowed down by the fact that the bishop's on the e-file. And I really thought I was okay. Um, and, I mean... I'm shuffling around here and I'm objectively a lot worse. Uh, H4, I'm not so much worse anymore. White really needs to develop his pieces first. Like I was saying, Bishop E2 makes a lot more sense to me than H4. Um, but okay. Then we trade off. I mean, objectively black's a lot worse here still. Um, but it's something playable. Uh, Philidor can be pretty interesting for sure. Yeah. I think that's where I do need to direct some of my attention, though. Um, and, I mean, I was sure I'm objectively worse here, but for anybody below 2,000, I know my opponent on this site's above 2,000, but I'm just saying like 2,000 USCF or FIDE or something, anybody below 2,000 is going to have a really hard time demonstrating that this is uh, strong for white. Um, where I really blew it was just that h6 just tactically uh, is necessary. And that castling right away um, crushes me due to h6, bishop f8 just being atrocious. I thought this wasn't so bad. I thought I'd be able to kick the knight. I thought a lot of things. I thought this center was weak. I thought this is weak. I thought this is weak. I thought this is maybe a bit overextended. And I didn't see any way for white to continue the attack. And this just completely caught me by surprise. Um, 